Hi, everyone. I'm Diane Brady. I'm here with my colleague, education reporter Emma Whitford. We are talking about diploma mills and the most recent example of which is I sounds like thousands of, of fake degrees in nursing. Right, Emma? What? Why is that particularly vulnerable to this? So the nursing industry uh, is particularly vulnerable to academic fraud for a couple of reasons. Uh, one being that there's such a huge nursing shortage in the United States right now that employers are just desperate to get people to work. They might not be vetting resumes as thoroughly as they should, and they could overlook some fraudulent credentials that way. Uh, so it's easy to get in to that field or relatively easy with a fraudulent degree. And at the same time, uh, nursing is also full of immigrants um, who are coming to the United States to work in nursing. Maybe they worked as a nurse in the country they came from and they need to get credentialed in the US. And because not everyone knows how to look for an accredited program and sort of dig through the weeds on that, uh, they could fall victim to an academic scam or in this case, um, end up at a fraudulent institution. One of the things that's interesting, nursing, kind of like law, in addition to your degree, you have to actually pass state exams to be licensed mm -hmm. in a particular state. What are some of the idiosyncrasies in that system in the U.S. that you found that either make it ripe for exploitation or helps to protect against this? Yeah, so all nurses to work in the U.S., you have to pass the NCLEX exam. Uh, it just allows you to be licensed um, for to work as a nurse. And, and it's possible to pass that exam without necessarily having done any sort of on the job training. So you could study and know how to answer all the questions. You could know theoretically how to put an IV in a patient's arm without having actually ever done that. So it does pose a risk to patients to have nurses coming in who are maybe um, completely book smart and know exactly what they're supposed to do, but who haven't actually had any hands-on experience uh, being a nurse and caring for patients. Um, it seems the Department of Justice, one of the cases that you mentioned in the article, there was a, um, these were nursing homes, assisted living facilities, home care. Is that really where this is most rampant, not a hospital setting, but some of these other more secondary institutions? Yeah, I don't know if I could say that that's where it's most rampant. Um, that's the information that we have about the healthcare facilities where they have found some of these nurses to be working at, but there hasn't been a lot of public information uh, released on that. I did see um, that there was a hospital in Georgia that was implicated in the case, so there are some nurses at hospitals, uh, but by no means have we seen information about all um, 7,600 people who purchased these degrees. So they could be all over the place. Um, those were just a few of the locations where we, we knew they had been working. Have there been instances where we actually have seen patients' lives put at risk or where an, a nurse uh, turned out to be unlicensed? Um, I mean, I, I, I theor it's, it seems it's theoretical that uh, this would be a danger to patients. You can understand why. But have there been actual instances of this? So far, we haven't seen any documented instances of patient harm. Uh, we did talk to the VA where uh, quite a few of those nurses were discovered. Um, I think they said that they had pulled 89 nurses out of patient care after all of this came to light. But they're um, not they're fired. Doing... They're still employed. They're not fired, um, and that's because some of these nurses may have actually earned their degrees legitimately just through one of the institutions that was also offering fraudulent degrees. So investigations are still ongoing about whether or not the nurses did buy their degrees or actually met the criteria that they needed. Um, but the, the VA did not discover any harm to patients in the meantime. Uh, but obviously, we don't, don't know where all of these nurses work yet. So some of them very well could be a danger to patients. And that's why it was quite a scary discovery when the Justice we Department- We should distinguish um, between diploma mills, which are fake degrees you can buy, and these for-profit 
dodgy universities or colleges that really give people useless degrees, which is really the, the, the classic victim there is the student, uh, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I don't know if they're often one and the same. I'm assuming they're two different buckets of, of fraud. Definitely. So you sometimes hear diploma mills um, described as just a dodgy, bad institution. But how I would define them and how most academics define them is you're just purchasing a degree. So you're going online or you're calling someone on the phone and you're paying money for a piece of paper. You're not completing any coursework, uh, no papers, no studying, no classes. Um, whereas a for-profit institution that has sort of been looked at quite a bit by the U.S. government is being a little bit dodgy and not always setting students up for success. They're still going to class. They're still usually completing assignments. Um, but their credentials just might not be worth much in the end. It's interesting because through the pandemic, we've seen this questioning of the value of a university or college degree in any case, um, this move towards skill-based training, apprenticeships. Is that, mm -hmm. is that likely to accelerate this trend, especially with chat GPT now being an issue in terms of the creation of content in academia? Um, how is this impacting the whole debate around that? Yeah, I don't know if I would go as far to say that degrees aren't going to be as important going forward, but I definitely think that employers are going to be doing more vetting of credentials. They're going to want to see you demonstrate those skills and examples where you've demonstrated those skills. So just saying that you've graduated might not be enough anymore. Um, and then around sort of the conversation about ChatGPT, a lot of educators are thinking of new ways for students to demonstrate what they know. So to actually show that you're learning um, in a way that you can't cheat or you can't use an AI for. So just your basic writing assignment or passing a multiple choice test, that's probably going to go by the wayside. So they're they're coming up with new ways for students to demonstrate their their skills in, in real world applications. One of the things that's most shocking um, about your reporting to me is that it's not actually illegal to have a fake degree in the US. Is that mm -hmm. is that true across the board? That really surprised me too. Um, I don't know if it's true in a lot of other countries, but it is true in the United States. You can hold a fake degree. You can produce a fake degree. It's not illegal. Uh, the only way that the feds actually get people for this kind of thing is wire fraud or mail fraud, some sort of exchanging of money. Um, it's also legal in Pakistan, where a lot of diploma mills are based. Um, Exact, which we mentioned in the piece, is one of the biggest, most notorious diploma mills. They're based in Pakistan and do a lot of business in the United States. Um, and it's perfectly legal as long as they don't discover that you're paying for it or or earning money from, from how, someone. How much does it cost? Like, I, I know that it's probably a vast range if you're talking from Pakistan to the U.S., but I presume it's a fraction of what it would cost to actually go to school and do the degree time-wise, but any general sense of how much people pay for these things? It really, really varies. I would fall back on what Alan Ezel, who's a retired FBI agent um, who we interviewed for this piece, he spent a lot of time investigating diploma mills. He paid a range of prices for his various degrees, everywhere from a few thousand dollars to fifteen thousand um, dollars. Now it's for bachelors, masters, doctorates, you name it. Um, and then sometimes he's even seen examples where people will pay over a million just because of blackmail and threats and sort of getting caught in the diploma mill scam that they've maybe started out with just buying a diploma for ten thousand dollars, but then were threatened and ended up selling over a lot more. One other question, Emma, which is um, as this type of news comes out, DOJ cases, it must get onto the radar of, of regulators, policymakers. Is there any move to change whether it's the legality of doing this or put more protections in place so that it doesn't happen as often? 
I haven't seen a lot of discussion about putting any laws in place against it. There have been congressional hearings over the past few decades that look at diploma mills and have sort of raised the issue about what a big problem they are and discuss doing something, but no actual moves were put in place to pass a law against it. Uh, we'll see if this time that changes, but as far as I can tell, it will remain to be legal in the United States. Caveat emptor, right? Should be on every degree then. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much.